Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Have you ever wanted to stream audio from your Raspberry Pi to your wireless device so that you could control your radio and carry on a QSO from your mobile phone? Well stick around and we'll show you how to get that done. Before we get to today's content, I've got to give a shout out to these gentlemen. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Okay, so what we're going to be doing today is setting up what's called a Mumble server and a Mumble client. And we're going to have to do that on the Raspberry Pi and then on my iPhone as well. Now, there is an application you can use for this uh, for the Android device. The name slips my mind right off the top of my head, but I'll put that information across the bottom of the screen. Uh, but this is, uh, this is a request that has come in multiple times to me uh, through email and comments and things like that, is how can I stream audio from the Raspberry Pi to, say, my iPhone or my iPad or uh, my Android phone or, you know, some other wireless device. And uh, the, last, uh, the last guy that sent this request in to me was Bill, November 7, India Foxtrot Charlie. And Bill finally, uh, I think he was just the straw that broke the camel's back. So I sat down and uh, tried to figure this out and got it working. You may have seen that teaser video a couple of weeks back. Let me show you guys how I did that, though. Let's go ahead and open up the terminal window on the Raspberry Pi. And guys, I'll uh, leave these commands down in the description below, or I'll leave a link to a web page that has these. I've had some issues with YouTube wanting to kind of mess up the links uh, so that when people copied those, they weren't coming out right. So I'll have to kind of watch that as I upload. But I'll be doing uh, quite a bit of copying and pasting. We'll zoom in, though, and try to uh, make this as easy for you as possible. So the first thing we're going to do is run sudo apt-get install mumble-server-fix-missing. Now, this over here at the end is important. Uh, as of the date of this video, when it's being filmed, I've had some issues with uh, not being able for the package to find everything that it needs uh, in the repository. So the fix missing at the end seems to uh, correct that. So let's go ahead and press return on that. Give that just a few minutes to install, and I'll be right back with you guys. Okay, and once that finishes up, let's clear that screen out. The next command that we're going to run is going to be sudo dpkg hyphen reconfigure space mumble hyphen server. We'll go ahead and run that, and that should bring us into a screen that looks like this. Now, you can't use your mouse here to click on things. That won't work. So you want to use your tab key and your enter key on your, uh, on your keyboard, the tab key to move the uh, highlighted uh, box around and the enter key to actually make the selection. So pressing the tab key just moves it back and forth. But I do want to start the server on boot, so I'm going to press return here. And then I definitely want to give the Mumble server the capability to use the higher priority. So if other things are going on uh, on the server itself, it kind of gives the Mumble server priority and keeps us from getting broken, uh, broken speech when we're doing a transmit or receive. So we'll choose yes here as well. Then it's going to ask us for uh, a, a password. Now, one word of caution here. Be very careful when you enter this. Uh, for whatever reason, this particular application does not ask for the password twice to make sure you didn't type it in wrong. So do be cautious here. There's my password. I'm going to press the Tab key to get to OK and press Enter to complete that. That takes just a couple of seconds to uh, finish up, so let's go ahead and clear the screen. Now, I'm going to run host name space hyphen capital I, and what that's going to do is that's going to tell me the IP addresses that are currently associated with my Raspberry Pi. 
So you can set this up two different ways. You could set this up to just run on your local network uh, by using your LAN uh, IP address. So if you had this connected uh, to your local network with a Cat5 cable, we could use this address here. Today, however, I'm going to be using the Pi's hotspot address. So that will be this 10.10.10.10, which means I'll have to connect my iPhone to the Raspberry Pi's hotspot before all of this works. If you wanted to use this on your local server, or on your local network rather, then you would want to use this address here. So kind of depends on where you want to hook up your Raspberry Pi and how you want to connect to it as to which IP address you will use. Now, before I started uh, filming this video, I did go ahead and install the hotspot and my hotspot tools uh, just to make things a little bit easier for us. But we do need to know that IP address in just a few minutes. Now, the next command we're going to run is sudo space nano space forward slash etc forward slash mumble hyphen server dot ini. And once we get into this, we need to make a couple of changes. Now, this is a really long, uh, really long uh, file here, so I'm going to use the search command to find what I'm looking for. So I'm going to press Control w on my keyboard, and I get this little pop-up window right down here at the bottom that says Search. And the first thing I'm going to search for is Welcome. And this is the welcome message uh, that the server puts out. And that information is contained right down here. So it says, Welcome to this server running. I'm just going to come down here and instead of this, I'm going to take that out and just put welcome to KM4ACK server running. Just my call sign there. Now let's press Control W again. And this time we're going to search for password. And this is the password to join the server. So whenever you connect one of the wireless devices, we're going to need this password here. I'm going to use KM4ACK1234 for the password. I would recommend probably at least an eight character password right here. Once we've entered this, let's press Control X, Y, and Enter to get out of that file. Okay, so now that we've got the initialization uh, file updated, we will need to restart the server. And we'll do that with this command here, sudo space forward slash etc forward slash init.d forward slash mumble hyphen server space restart. We'll go ahead and press OK there, give it just a couple of seconds, and we should get an OK right over here in this box. Now, we need to also go ahead and install a mumble client on the Raspberry Pi. So we'll do that with this command here, which is sudo space apt hyphen git space install space mumble. And again, we're going to put this fix hyphen missing over here at the end. So that's hyphen hyphen fix hyphen missing at the end of the command. Let's go ahead and press return on that. And it'll take this a couple of more minutes to install. And then we'll be ready to start configuring things. Now, I went ahead and connected my signal link up to the system, but that's the sound card we're going to be using for that. It's probably the easiest to configure because it has Vox built into it. However, if you wanted to use something like the Sombrant sound card, you could go ahead and enable Vox on your radio as well. Uh, Vox typically doesn't work well for digital, but since this is voice, it will work, uh, it will work fine for us. Uh, one other thing is we need to adjust the delay knob on our signal link. Again, this is not something we typically do with digital. With digital, we want that delay turned all the way off. But with voice, we want to uh, dial in a little bit of delay with this. Now, let's go ahead and go up to our speaker icon on the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to right-click and choose the USB audio codec. I'm going to come back up to the speaker icon, right click again, and come down to Output Device Settings. Once I get into this window, let's make sure that uh, it is enabled. 
And let's go ahead and turn the volume all the way up. And let's click OK. Now, I have had some issues with the Mumble server not starting on boot, uh, and I wasn't able to connect to it. I found the easiest way to overcome that is just to run the Mumble server restart command, uh, and that'll go ahead and get everything working for us again. So we'll run that. We should get an OK right over here. And there you can see the OK. And now let's go ahead and start the Mumble client on the Raspberry Pi. So we'll go ahead and just enter in mumble, M-U-M-B-L-E, at the command line, and press return. Now it'll take this a couple of seconds to fire up. And you'll notice I do get some fail to authenticate and a few other... I want to click back over this and show you guys. I do get some uh, errors uh, at the very beginning of this. I haven't found that they've presented any problems. So we'll just go ahead and minimize this and we'll get the audio tuning wizard to come up next. Let's go ahead and press on next. In this window here, under device, we want to choose our audio codec sound card. So you can see right here, mine is plug HW, card equals codec, comma, dev equals one. But more importantly, we're looking for this USB audio codec here. And you do want to use the plug HW, I have not had any luck using these others down here. So we'll choose that one there. And again, we're going to choose the same thing for the next one. So let's come down the list until we find that one. So plug HW here and we see the USB audio codec right there. So we'll go ahead and uh, choose that in both places. I'm going to leave enable positional audio checked. I'm honestly not sure uh, exactly what that is, but uh, it seems to work okay, leaving it checked. Let's go ahead and click the Next button. I'm going to leave this delay set to uh, 50 milliseconds here, and we'll go ahead and choose Next. Now, here, I find it best with the signaling to run this slider up so we have just a little bit of green left right here. Let's go ahead and choose Next. And guys, you may have to play with some of these settings in your setups. Uh, I'm going to leave this one just set to where it is at default and choose Next. And then right here under Quality Settings, I'm going to choose High, since we're running it on our local area network. Let's go ahead and press Next one more time. And... This is the positional audio, and I think it's really designed for gamers to give them more of a surround sound type thing. I'm just going to leave this. I'm not going to uh, test it or check it or anything. I'm just going to leave it right where it is and click Next. And then I don't care to submit anonymous statistics to the Mumble Project. You can do so if you wish. We'll go ahead and click Finish on this. Now, we'll get this uh, other window that will pop up that says Create uh, Certificate Authentication. And I'm just going to leave it for automatic. I'm still going to get a certificate error every time I try to connect. All I have to do is click Yes, Use This Certificate, and I'm ready to go. We'll go ahead and click Finish here. Now, the next thing you'll see pop up is this Mumble Server Connect. Let's click Add New right here. For our IP address, now this will be the Pi's IP address. Uh, if you're running this on the local network, then you may have one IP address. Remember, I'm using the hotspot here, so I'm going to use 10.10.10.10. .10 We're going to leave the port at default, which is 64738, and we'll give it a username. You could use uh, your call sign here or whatever you wanted to use for uh, your username. I'm just going to choose Pi. That way it'll let me know this one is running on the Raspberry Pi. Let's go ahead and click OK. Make sure that's highlighted and click Connect. Now here's the certificate warning that I was telling you guys about and uh, I just go ahead and choose Yes here to uh, trust it. Now it's going to tell me that I have the wrong password this is the password that we entered in the INI file earlier where we did the welcome text. So if you remember what you entered there, you want to put that password in here and choose OK. 
Now, if you've done everything correctly up to this point, you should see a Pi user with a little green uh, man beside him. Okay, so I want to make one more change to this before we set up the iPhone. I'm going to go up to Configure and Settings. Once that window opens up, let's make sure we're on Audio Output. Uh, I'm sorry, Audio Input rather, in the t on the top left. And I've had some, uh, I've had a couple of issues where it did not want to uh, transmit what the radio was receiving over to uh, the phone. So what I did is I came in here under transmission when I had that problem, and instead of doing it on voice activity, I'm gonna choose continuous. So what this is going to do is this is going to send a constant stream of data from the radio to the Pi's mumble server, which will then be retransmitted to the mumble client. Uh, so I did choose continuous here. I'll come down and choose apply and OK. You'll notice the little man turns blue because at this point he is constantly streaming data. Okay, so let's go over to the iPhone and take a look at how we set up that application. Okay, so once you're over on your mobile device, now I do have this one connected to my Raspberry Pi hotspot. I'm going to touch on favorite servers and then I'm going to use the plus symbol right up here at the top. The description, I'm just going to call it Pi Hotspot. The address is going to be the uh, IP address of the hotspot. Now, if you had this connected to your LAN somewhere else, you would want to use uh, that IP address instead. But since I'm connected to the hotspot, I'm going to use that. The port number here is going to be the default of 64738. The username, I'm going to use my call sign here. We can't have uh, two people of this, with the same username on the server at the same time. So we used Pi a while ago uh, setting up the, the uh, client on the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to use my call sign here. Now for the password, this is the password that we set up in that text file when we were changing the welcome message as well. So I'll enter that here and go ahead and click done up in the top. Now I'll have a new, uh, a new instance under my favorite servers. So I wanna click on that and then click connect. And there we go, we're connected up. Now I've just got it set to, I believe, upper sideband on my radio right now. So if you do get a warning uh, about the certificate, you'll need to tell it to trust the certificate again. And when you're ready to talk, you want to press on the lips right at the bottom of the screen, the big lips. That's your PTT button. So you'll click it while you're talking and release when you're not talking. And looking back at the Raspberry Pi, you'll see that I have uh, two connections right here on the Raspberry Pi. KM4ACK, which is uh, the phone that I've got connected and the Pi, which is this actual client right here. So both are connected up to the server currently. All right, guys, so there you have it. That's the way you set up the Mumble server and Mumble client on the Raspberry Pi so that you can do remote audio from your wireless device back to the Pi and out to the radio over RF. I hope this helps you get your Mumble server set up. Be sure to click the thumbs up button before you head off. We'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.